The Whoopstrap uses a lot of algorithms to calculate your strain, recovery and sleep. With the new Whoopstrap 4.0 coming out, new sensors are added. However, many of the algorithms used will likely stay the same or similar to the ones in the Whoopstrap 3.0. In this video, I provide an overview of the accuracy and usefulness of these metrics. I base this on experiments I've done on its sleep tracking accuracy, heart rate measurements and the real life implications of the scores it provides. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. For almost a year, I've been wearing the Whoopstrap 3.0 on a daily basis, collecting tons of data. As a data scientist, I can compare the data collected by the Whoopstrap to other physiological measurements. I've been tracking as much as possible in my life. This includes twice daily blood pressure measurements, rectal temperature measurements and oxygen saturation measurements. I also recorded daily sleep EEGs, tracked my sports and got weekly brain MRIs. Finally, I also recorded and scored different aspects of my mental well-being each day. All these measurements take about 11 hours a week and are part of a serious scientific project I've been doing for the last three years. Now this video today is divided into three parts. In the first part, we will evaluate if the different scores the Whoopstrap algorithm provides are predictive of any other real life measurements I took each day. Specifically, I'll be looking at the strain, recovery and sleep scores. In the second part, we will look at the accuracy of the sleep tracking algorithm. I'll do this by comparing the sleep stages of the Whoopstrap to a scientific EEG device. In the third part, we will look at the heart rate accuracy of the Whoopstrap. Let's start with some conclusions up front. I think the Whoopstrap can definitely help people improve their health and well-being. Some of its metrics are really accurate, though we have to be careful not to overinterpret these. In this video, I'll try to explain briefly but clearly why this is. Let's start by looking at the different metrics that the Whoopstrap provides. The Whoopstrap provides a bunch of different metrics and I exported these data and analyzed them in my coding language. Specifically, I compared them to other physiological and mental parameters I tracked. Now, many of the measurements I do, I do both in the morning after waking up and also just before going to bed. I therefore split the data analysis into two parts, one for mornings and one for the evenings. Here you can see the results for the morning. Now each dot here is a single type of measurement I did, either with the Whoopstrap or with another device. A line between the dots indicates that they show an association. So if one goes up, the other goes up as well. Or if it's a negative correlation, one goes up and the other goes down. Now let's add some labels to the dots so we can see what each of them means. And that is what is displayed here. But visualized like this, it's quite large and not easy to interpret. So let's zoom into some of the most interesting findings. Let's start by looking at my recovery score. Now the recovery score quantifies your readiness to perform inside and outside of the gym. Every morning, Whoop calculates the recovery score on a scale of zero to 100%. The score lets you know if your body is ready to perform, needs an active recovery day or requires rest. The highlighted circles are the one that the recovery score was associated with. There are two findings I find most interesting here. First of all, many of the metrics it associates with are calculated by the Aura Ring. Now the Aura Ring is a competitor of the Whoopstrap that is trying to estimate similar patterns as the Whoopstrap. So it's not surprising that the recovery score of the Whoopstrap is correlated with the readiness score of the Aura Ring, as you can see here. What is also interesting is that the recovery score is associated with my diastolic blood pressure in the morning, as you can see here, meaning that the recovery score somehow reflects real physiological parameters. Next, let's take a look at the sleep score of the Whoop, which you can see on the left. What I find interesting here is that first of all, this again associates with my blood pressure in the morning and with similar parameters that the Aura Ring estimates. However, in addition, this is also strongly associated with my subjective objective scoring of how I slept in the morning, as you can see right here. Each morning, before looking at any of my trackers, I fill out how good I feel I slept and how tired I feel. The sleep score of the Whoopstrap is associated with this. There are many more interesting findings, but in order to stay concise, I want to just view one last parameter in this graph, and that is how happy I felt waking up. When we highlight this, we can see it was associated with my blood pressure and my heart rate. However, additionally, we see this is associated with the amount of REM sleep according to the Whoopstrap and the heart rate variability score of the Aura Ring. Now, I don't have a direct explanation for why my REM sleep percentage is associated with my happiness in the morning, but I did think it was an interesting observation. 
Next, let's take a look at my scores in the evening. Now this is interesting because by this point, my daily strain might have an influence on my physiological and my mental parameters. Again, here we have a similar network to before, but now for the evening. Let's start by looking at the strain score. Now the strain score is a summary of the cardiovascular load. In other words, the level of strain your training takes on your cardiovascular system. This is based on your heart rate achieved during individual activities or over the course of the day. As you can see, the strain score associates with a number of different parameters that indicate in various amounts how much activity I had that day. Interestingly, it associates with the activity score of the aura ring as well. We also see it's associated with my productivity that day, as scored subjectively by me. However, I'm not sure if this is because I'm less relaxed when I'm more productive, which in the end leads to a higher average heart rate and therefore a higher strain score, or if the days I'm more productive, my workout schedule is different, which causes this association. Next, let's take a look at sleep need, which you see here on the left. Sleep need is a measure of how much sleep you need the next day in order to hit your peak performance. We see this is associated with my heart rate variability, both according to the whoop strap and the aura ring. Additionally, it's associated with how productive I felt I was that day according to my own scoring. It might be that on the days that I'm more productive, I have more stress and expend more energy and therefore have a larger sleep need. Or perhaps more likely, I just didn't get enough sleep because of the work I did. Now, of course, these are all just examples of the different associations you can see in this network. But I think with the examples I showed you, I made the point I wanted to make here. So what do these results actually prove? Well, for me, they mainly indicate that the measures that the Whoopstrap provides hold some bearing on how my body and mind function in real life. This means that you could potentially use them to optimize your day by planning your workouts and stressful activities accordingly. When your scores indicate you need to recover, you might want to take it a bit easier and go to bed on time. Now, is it perfect? Well, no, but nothing will be. In my opinion, these metrics can be used in conjunction with other parameters. Most importantly, how you're feeling you're doing subjectively. This should hold a lot of importance as well. However, something like the whoop strap is a nice way of recording all these metrics automatically, helping you stay accountable for getting the right amount of sleep and exercise. Next, let's take a look at how accurate the measurements are that these scores are based on. In particular, I want to look at sleep tracking and heart rate accuracy. Now, I already discussed this in more detail in separate videos, but in this video, I want to show you the most important results. Since I'm in a unique position to test the accuracy of the sleep tracking algorithm, I want to start off with the sleep test. For the sleep comparison, I tested the whoop strap for 41 nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements and is being used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I received my sleep data from Whoop and converted this into a usable format. With the infrared recording, I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the Whoop strap correctly predicts when I'm awake. To get an objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the sleep stages of the Whoop strap and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's look at the total percentage of each of the sleep stages the EEG device and the whoop strap detected. Now visualize that for the EEG device on the left and the whoop strap on the right. Overall, these percentages are a bit off. We see that the whoop strap predicts a little bit too much deep sleep and not enough light sleep. It also predicts slightly too much REM sleep. The total amount of awake time is not bad, but it does predict a little bit too much awake time. More important even than these total percentages is checking if the whoop strap predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. And that's what I displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device and on the left, the sleep stages according to the whoop strap. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the whoop strap. If we first look at deep sleep, we see that more than 75% of what was deep sleep was also detected correctly as deep sleep by the whoop strap. And this is really good. If it was mistaken, it was generally confused with light sleep. Now light sleep was one of the worst predicted sleep stages by the whoop strap. And this is likely largely because it predicts too little light sleep as we saw before in the general overview percentages. If light sleep was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. REM sleep is mostly correctly predicted. In total, 67% of what was REM sleep was also predicted as REM sleep by the whoop strap. Now this large percentage of correct REM sleep prediction also means we can see many of the sleep cycles. If REM sleep was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Just to show you what these sleep cycles look like, I plotted one example night here. 
On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the bottom, the sleep stages according to the whoop strap. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night, and on the vertical axis, we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. Now, REM sleep here is indicated in red, and here I've actually visualized the different sleep cycles. Now each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep together called non-REM and always end in REM. As you can see, based on the EEG data, I had five sleep cycles here, and this matches pretty nicely with the data from the whoop strap. We can see here it starts with some non-REM, then REM, again non-REM, REM, non-REM, REM, non REM, REM etc. So it's pretty good. Finally, awake sleep detection was okay, with 61% of it being correctly detected. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep, which makes sense since this is the closest stage to awake. What we actually saw in many cases, as we also see in this example here, is that awake time when it was long, it was detected by the whoop strap, but the shorter awake moments were not detected, as I marked here in green. So this is all looking quite good for the whoop strap. It tracks most of the sleep stages correctly and is able to detect most of the sleep cycles I go through at least most of the time. It does struggle a bit with detecting light sleep and awake time correctly. So how accurate is it at detecting the moment you fall asleep and wake up? Now the University of Arizona Medical Center in Tucson, which studied the WHOOP strap in collaboration with WHOOP, found that WHOOP accurately detects sleep duration with a precision of 17.8 minutes. Let's see if this matches my findings. That is what is plotted here. On the vertical axis we have the dates of the nights I tested the strap and on the horizontal axis is the time difference between the EEG device and the whoop strap for waking up in yellow and falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than in reality and a negative number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see, the largest time difference is 22 minutes, where they detected me waking up too early. But in general, the difference is just a few minutes maximum, so this is really good. However, there does seem to be a slight pattern where it predicts me as falling asleep slightly later than I did, as you can see by the blue points here. However, this is always just a few minutes, so it's still really accurate. So how does this compare to some of the best sleep trackers I've tested so far? That is what I displayed here. On the top left, we have the results for the whoop strap. On the top right, the results for the aura ring. On the bottom left, the results for the Fitbit Inspire 2. And on the bottom right, the results for the Withing Sleep Analyzer. Now the Fitbit Inspire 2 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer are some of the best devices I've tested so far. And as you can see, the whoop strap definitely doesn't underperform compared to the Withing Sleep Analyzer. I would just say that Fitbit devices like the Fitbit Inspire 2 are most consistent in predicting all sleep stages pretty accurately. Now on the top right, we have the Aura Ring, which I would say is one of the main competitors of the whoop strap because it tries to do similar things. It gives you different scores that help you guide your day. And as you can see, the Aura Ring definitely performs more poorly, at least in predicting the different sleep stages, than the whoop strap. So for sleep stage prediction in particular, I would prefer the whoop strap over the Aura Ring. That being said, the Aura Ring has a lot of other benefits, but watch my videos on the Aura Ring if you're interested in that. Finally, let's take a look at the heart rate accuracy of the whoop strap during exercise. Now hopefully the whoop strap is at least as accurate at measuring your heart rate during sleep, which is important for the different metrics the whoop strap calculates. To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare it to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Whoop strap and the Polar H10 chest strap for 101 spinning sessions and 58 weightlifting sessions. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's have a look at those results. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy. Each dot is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and along the vertical axis the value according to the whoop strap. Now the blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the whoop strap. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the whoop strap is half the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, overall, there's a very good agreement between the whoop strap and the ECG chest strap, since most points are along the blue line. The correlation between the whoop strap and the ECG chest strap is about 0.96, which is really good. A perfect correlation would be one, but this is pretty close. However, we do see some deviations with some points below the blue line, especially here in the medium heart rate range. Since the points are below the blue line, this means that the whoop strap detected a too low heart rate in these moments. Let's have a look at weightlifting and spinning separately to see which type of exercise is causing these issues. Here are the results for just the spinning sessions and as you can see the correlation is even higher now. 
And we can also see that this cloud of points that we saw before in the medium heart rate range has significantly decreased, which makes me think that those moments where my heart rate was detected incorrectly in the medium heart rate range was actually the result of weightlifting. This is a similar plot, but just for weightlifting. As you can see, the correlation between the ECG chest strap and the whoop strap is much lower than before, 0 0.70. This is likely because during weightlifting, I flex the muscles and tendons in my arm, and this makes it difficult for the strap to actually detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. However, compared to many of the other devices I've tested, the whoop strap still performs quite well during weightlifting, though for many people, it might still not be good enough for this type of exercise. Just to show you what that looks like during weightlifting, here I've plotted some examples. On the horizontal axis we have the time, and on the vertical axis my heart rate. In red I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in blue my heart rate according to the whoop strap. As you can see in red, for each set I did there's a peak in my heart rate, but the whoop strap is not completely able to follow this. It's generally lower as you can see by the peak in my heart rate. Now this is what it looks like for many of these training sessions. Now for some training sessions it is a bit better as you can see here in the beginning, so it likely depends on the type of exercise I'm doing. As you can also see here, for this training session it's quite okay again, but in this moment I switched exercises and again it's a bit worse. And also for this exercise here, in general, it did not do great. So it's a bit hit and miss during weightlifting. So based on this, I would conclude that during my cardio exercises, the whoop strap works really well. However, during weightlifting, it struggles a bit and it can't always keep up with the increases in my heart rate. However, it still does better than most of the other devices I've tested, at least during weightlifting. Overall, I'm quite happy with the performance of the whoop strap's algorithms and sensors. The different scores it calculates show an association with the real-time physical and mental parameters I measured, which is reassuring to see. The sleep tracking and heart rate tracking of the whoop strap are also amongst the best of the different devices I've tested so far. Of course, these results were all for the whoop strap 3.0. However, as I mentioned in the intro, I expect many of the algorithms used by whoop will say the same or similar. Of course, I'll test it in detail once a new device is released. Would I recommend you buy the whoop strap? Well, just looking at the performance of the different scores it provides, I would definitely recommend it. The main thing that might turn a lot of people off is that whoop is a subscription service, which means that the device is free, but you have to pay each month. If you normally upgrade devices every few years, then whoop is relatively expensive. However, if you regularly upgrade devices, then whoop is not that much more expensive. The good thing about a subscription service is that the manufacturer is incentivized to keep updating and maintaining the service and algorithm. Additionally, you get the newest device for free once it releases, as we saw now with the Whoopstrap 4.0. If you're planning on buying the Whoopstrap 4.0, you can use my affiliate link below to get $30 or euros off. There are a number of limitations to the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the whoop strap on me and just for a limited number of days. Second, I used the simple Pearson correlation in most of my analyses, where more versatile methods could have found more associations. Finally, the fact that two things correlate does not mean they influence each other directly, or as scientists like to say, correlation does not equal causation. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. And also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and also watch some of my other videos.